Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachahakurash, and double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutation unto the elect. And this is going to be real brief. I wanted to uh, do a quick lesson, all right, um, scripturally linking, all right, the uh, biblical Edomites to those who call themselves Greeks. All right, now, when you go to Daniel, the uh, seventh chapter, okay, when you go to Daniel, the seventh chapter, in the sixth verse, it says, after this also I beheld and lo, a leopard, which had on the back of it four wings of a fowl, all right? And this is speaking of Alexander in the Greek empire coming into power. And we know that the uh, four wings that were on the back of it are the four generals, all right, that uh, put crowns on themselves after Alexander passed away, you see. And that's Lysimaeus. Cassander, Ptolemy, and Seleucid. And out of uh, Seleucid, all right, came uh, Antiochus, which put holy hell on the Israelites, along with the rest of them. All right, but, you know, the theme of Jacob and Esau is all throughout the Holy Scriptures. All right, if you have ears to hear and eyes to see. All right, it was um, even in Esau's rulership, all right, that the Messiah was crucified, although it was wicked Jake. All right, who called on him for that to happen? All right, but you had those Roman soldiers which pierced him, and what did the Lord say? All right, when he returns, all right, he's 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 coming back. Uh, let's get that, you know, in uh, Revelation, the first chapter. And let's see here. Um. In the seven verses says, behold, he cometh with clouds when he returns. He's not going to meet them as a man and every eye shall see him and also they which pierced him. And that was the them Roman soldiers, man. And all the kindreds of the earth shall well before him. And we know he's returning to an Edomite ruled power structure. But when you get Daniel seven and six, it talks about that leopard, which is the um, beginning of of this beast system which is why when you go to revelation the 13th chapter okay when it tells you about this beast system what does it start with okay revelation 13 and 1 and i stood up on the sand of the sea and i saw a beast ride up rise up out of the sea all right these are this is speaking of a rulership now this beast system as we always tell you started with the greeks now when you go to verse 2 it says in the beat the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. And we know that's uh, Alexander. And eventually his four generals would uh, take precedent. But what did he do when he came onto the earth? He conquered even before him. All right. His father, Philip, conquered. His father was conquering. Okay. And these are the Edomites. Now, with that being said, what I really wanted to go into was... Uh, when you go to uh, the book, let's go back here. We'll get that in just a minute. When you go to the book of Esther, all right, we understand and know about the story dealing with Haman. If you don't know about that story, all right, um, you can type in GMS Purim, okay, and I'm pretty sure a video will pop up and it explains, you know, why we have the Holy Day Purim because we were delivered from the plans of Haman, okay? When you uh, look at it, <laughs> a lot of our holy days deal with being delivered from Esau, even uh, Hanukkah, okay, which will show you that when we were delivered from those Greeks, it tells you we were ch delivered from the children of Idumia, which are the Edomites. Now, right here in Esther 3 and 1, it says, after these did King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Amadatha, the Agagite, so Haman... All right, who we know hated us and wanted to destroy us. And why did he want to destroy us? Because he was an Ag Agagite, going back to Agag, all right, which was the king of the Amalekites. 
1 Samuel 15 and 8, and he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people. Now, this is speaking of Saul, who was given the order to destroy all of the Amalekites. Was that racist? <laughs> you see? But he didn't do it. All right? But we know eventually, all right, David, you know, uh, Samuel came, who uh, anointed David. All right, and he got rid of them, but ultimately they uh, were able to, um, you know, continue that seed line. All right, because the house of David, all right, under Yahweh are going to get rid of them. All right, as the Lord intended, the whole nation of Esau, Edom. All right, but as you see here, Agag is the king of the Amalekites. Let's go ahead and look up this, uh, this word, Amalekites. All right, or Amalek. Okay. I Malak. All right. It says dweller in a valley. <laughs> All right. And uh, it says son of Eliphaz by his concubine. And it's crazy that con uh, uh, children by concubines weren't, you know, usually um, held in high esteem. Okay. Son of Eliphaz by his concubine. Timnah, grandson of Esau. All right. Progenitor of a tribe of people in southern Canaan, descendants of Amalek. Okay. So Amalek. Okay. You can go back to Genesis, the 36th chapter. All right. And Timnah was the concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son. And, uh, uh, and, he, and he bare Amalek. Okay. Now. And this is a fulfillment of going all the way back to uh, the garden where the, the serpent was told that what? Let's get that. Genesis, the uh, fourth chapter. Okay. Genesis, the fourth chapter. Or the third chapter, Salakia. Genesis, the third chapter. And... The 14th verse and Yahweh said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, which is why the curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked. All right. The worst punishment, the worst look. All right. Uh, the worst vibe, everything will be given unto this damn demon man and his seed. OK, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thou shalt eat dust all the days of thy life. Meaning you will be a very, very low person. Very, very base. And what did the Lord do? He took the bases of men and set them over the whole earth. All right, for punishment unto Jacob. Now, as you go down, it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman. Who's the woman? Israel. Okay whose eve is symbolic of the nation of Israel. Enmity is hatred, friction. And you niggas are running around with signs trying to figure out why he keeps shooting you. Well, it all goes back to the scriptures. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head. Because the scriptures say we're going to, all right, crush the head of the serpent. We're going to crush the head of the rulers. Smite, all right, the head of the heathen. And thou shall bruise his heel, all right? And they bruised our heel, all right, by taking us down as a nation. <clears throat> That's why Yahweh said, all right, he came to preach the gospel unto the bruised, all right? Those who are bruised, all right? Because we as a nation were taken down, man. Luke 14 or Luke 4 and 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have appointed me to preach the gospel to the poor and he have sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to preach deliverance to the captives and a recovering of the sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. See, in a heel injury, it takes a very, very long time to recover from, but you can't come back. Not most athletes come back from that Achilles injury. All right. But we as a nation, we came back from the injury that partook us in the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman, all right? And what would happen between them and the earth would be fulfilled through Jacob and Esau, 
which were twins in the room in the womb of uh, Rebecca. Okay, so when you look at the wars between the Edomites and the Israelites, the Amalekites and the Israelites, all throughout the Bible. Okay, it goes back to what was prophesied to happen. Even unto this day, there is friction. Now, going to Esther, the third chapter. Okay, in the first verse, after these things, that King Ahasuerus promote Haman, the son of Hamadathat, the Agagite. See, Haman was an Edomite, all right, of the tribe of Amalek. Okay, which today they they are the 1948ers. Okay. The ones who uh, pretty much control the world. Now, if Haman had this in mind to destroy all of the Jews at this point, what do you think he would do when he had the fatness of the earth and control of all of the resources and all of the money and the shekels? He go try to do the same thing. And that's what he's tried to do. All right. People fail to link what's what the prophecy say, what, what's happening in real life. So here in the uh, the uh, Persian Empire. OK, you have Haman. All right, because Esau's always somewhere wiggling around the Agagite. OK, and basically has been promoted unto second in command. OK, within this empire. Now, as you read, Mordecai didn't bow and there was a big thing. And basically, Haman tried to destroy or a lot make up a lie to destroy all of the Jews. OK, he tried to, you know, convince the king that they were trying to do this and that, you know, and you can read that story. Just look up Purim. OK, now. We see that Haman is an Agagite, right? Now we're going to go to the additions of Esther. The 16th chapter and the 10th verse. OK. What does it say for Haman or Amen? All right. A Macedonian. The son of Amadathath, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received us. Now, when you read this, this is a letter that the king Artaxerxes, all right, wrote, you know, after finding out that Haman was full of shit, you see, because just as right now, Haman, in the form of all of these Edomites, in this beast system are trying to blame all right the israelites for being terrorist okay and everything else that which is then is now okay now haman has the fatness of the earth and control of the media okay so his plan was to formulate a lie to present us as these beast but it all flipped and turned on his own head. So when you read this, this is a letter so we can get understanding just a little bit where he's writing to his uh, uh, province, you know, that Haman, who he exalted to second in command, was full of SHIT and he's a demon because he got caught. The, 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 the spirit, all right, just as it's getting ready to catch you Edomites and it already has. All right, but you still have a little bit more time, you know, to wiggle around and lie. But it's all going to come back on your own head. And Haman, who had planned to hang all of the Jews by their neck at the gallows, it, it, he eventually got hung by his neck. Now, as you go down, let's see here. Um, I just go to the point. For Amon, which is Haman, a Macedonian, see, he called him Macedonian, all right? And why was he called Macedonian? First of all, let's look that up, okay? And we know that Haman was a descendant of Agag, which was an Amalekite, <clears throat> but it says a, a Macedonian. Okay, let's look up Macedonian or Macedonia to see exactly where that is because that's where the Greeks had conquered okay the so-called Greeks because these aren't the original Greeks these are Edomites but they con conquered these uh, regions um, an ancient country in Southeast Europe 
okay, which was originally inhabited and given to the Japhetic people, which were a dark skinned people, okay? North of Greece in classical times, it was a kingdom that became a world power under Philip. Who's Philip II? That's Alexander's father, Alexander's father, and Alexander the Great. All right, because it was conquered. The region is now divided between Greece, Bulgaria, and North Macedonia. Okay, so as they conquer these lands, okay. <clears throat> They are then what? Called after these lands. Okay? Now this is our territory. I'm the Macedonian. Okay? Same thing they did over here. Okay? And named it America. For Haman, a Macedonian, the son of a Marathat, being indeed a stranger from the Persian blood, meaning he wasn't of the Persian blood. All right? But somehow some way he wiggled his way up to be second in command in that rulership in that kingdom and far distant from our goodness and as a stranger received us okay he wasn't of the persian blood okay he was an edomite going back to agag which was an amalekite okay and we where do we find that out at right here esther the third chapter Haman was the son of Amadathath, the Agagite, okay, which were Amalekites, going back to the war, all right, that we had at the time of Saul, Samuel, all right, and uh, David as well. Now, with that, with that line, all right, it says, have so far obtained the favor that we show towards every nation as that he was called our father. It was continually honored of all the next person unto the king. He was second in command, but he not bearing his great dignity went above to deprive us of our kingdom and life, having by manifold and cunning deceits, cunning deceits, okay? Because that's the serpent. That's the seed of the serpent, man. Sought of us the destruction as well as Mordecai, who was an Israelite, a Jew, I believe it was a Benjamite when you uh, go into it because Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, all right, were still, um, you know, were, were ordered to rebuild the temple and all of that. It says, who saved our life and continually procured our good as also of blameless Esther, all right, partaker of our kingdom with their whole nation. For by these means he thought finding us destitute of friends to have translated the kingdom of the persians to the macedonians so they found out that really he was trying to override and become a right ruler he had plans man but we find that the jews whom this wicked wretch they called him a wicked wretch <laughs> the persians and if you if you look today even in today's news times you notice that you know, uh, Ahmadinejad, who's a Persian of uh, Iran, in the in the, in the Iranians, they constantly cursing out Esau for what he did to Jake and for slavery. Okay, and they called him a wicked wretch. Have delivered us to utter destruction. Are no evil doers, but live by the most just laws, man, and that they. And that they be the children of the most high and most mighty living God who have ordered the kingdom both unto us and to our progenitors in the most excellent manner. All right, because uh, the Medes and the Persians, you know, allowed us to rebuild our temple. All right, and so forth. So you can continue to read this, but ultimately Haman got caught, man. But what you see here is that he is called a Macedonian. All right. Macedonian. Now let's get First Maccabees. First Maccabees. The first chapter and the first verse. And it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip the Macedonian. Uh oh. Who came out of the land of Chittim 
had smitten Darius, king of the Persians and the Medes. Okay. Now, Alexander didn't physically put his sword to Darius, but it was through his force that one of Darius's close men said, you know, because Darius didn't want to submit. You know, the, 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 the Greeks were conquering and destroying. Okay. Well, Alexander and, you know, his army. And Darius didn't want to submit. And one of his men was like, look, we got to submit to these niggas. So he, he, he smote Darius, right? Showing you that the king, all right, gets, all right, uh, uh, all of the credit for what his men do, okay? Just like through everything we do, who, who gets the glory? The Most High through Yahweh Shai, and eventually we'll get our glory, Okay? had smitten Darius, the king of the Persians and Medes, that he reigned in his stead first over Greece. You see that? They were conquering these regions. The original inhabitants of these lands, as you can see, Persians and Medes, who, who are the Medes? Are Japhetic people. The Medes are sons of Japhet. Okay? So what happened? Alexander Philip the Macedonian. Now, who's Alexander? Okay, he's the beginning, all right, of this whole beast system. He's the leopard spoken of, okay, in Revelation. Let's get that Revelation the thir uh, uh, thirteen chapter. Okay, let's go go over here first. Let's get Daniel the seventh chapter. And let's prove. With these are Edomites. Daniel, the seventh chapter, in the sixth verse. And after this, I beheld in low another like a leopard, which had on the uh, upon the back of it four wings of a fowl and beast. And the beast also had four heads, and dominion was given unto it. And this is Alexander's four generals. Okay, so you see, it's likened unto a leopard, which in Revelation the thirteenth chapter. The beast system that we are currently living in started with the leopard. The beast which I saw was likened to a leopard. So these are Edomites. Okay. Alexander, the son of Philip the Macedonian. Okay. Showing you he was an Amalekite. They were of that same line as Haman, who was also called the Macedonian. Okay, Haman, the Macedonian, okay, who was what? An Amalekite that went back to Agag, okay? The scriptures are showing you that these are the Edomites, preferably <laughs> the Amalekites, you see? And you still have people running around with this false doctrine okay that Alexander all right the Romans were Japhetic people no they weren't they conquered those Japhetic lands okay even more proof that the Greeks are the children of Esau okay when you get first Maccabees the fourth chapter another holy day Okay, there's Hanukkah that we deal with. Now, during this whole time, who's who's putting hell on the Israelites? As a matter of fact, the whole story starts as you go down with one of uh, um, you know Alexander's four generals was Seleucid. Out of the Seleucid Empire, after Alexander died, it says his servants, which are those four wings, okay bear rule everyone in his place verse 9 and after his death they all put crowns upon themselves and they had any war so did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth see the scriptures tell you that evils were multiplied in the earth when the Greeks started to rule under Alexander now what does Esau tell you in his school civilization started with the Greeks as if there was no other empires before him why is he saying that because this is the beginning of his system. So, of course, he's going to big up, 
okay, uh, uh, his own. But what does the scriptures tell you? Evils will multiply in the earth. Now, it didn't get real, real hard for the Jews until this wicked root, verse 10, and then there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes. He came out of the Seleucid Empire because Alexander's four generals, Lysimaeus, Cassander, Ptolemy, Ptolemy conquered the Greeks, I mean the uh, 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 Egypt, okay, and started putting uh, uh, themselves up as pharaohs, and then you had the Seleucid. Out of the Seleucid came this, this nigga here, Antiochus, man, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, all right, and he reigned in the 130th year in the kingdom of the Greeks, and this is when Israel was what? Forced to forsake the covenant. All right. And start following the ways of the heathen, man. Exercising naked. They were Hellenized. This is why when you read in the New Testament, it talks about the Greek. Because our people were made to follow those Greek customs. But you did have a remnant. Okay. Uh, uh, of them. You know, the Maccabees, which this whole, you know, chapter is, you know, given that history who didn't, you know, follow after those ways. OK, you hear you read about Ptolemy, king of Egypt. See, all of this is true history. You can go into secular history and find this. And, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's here in the scriptures, man. And the average person who, you know, will tell you that Alexander was an actual person. They, they, there's no doubt. Now, outside of the Bible, there's only about 11 manuscripts to prove his existence. But the Bible, okay, has over 20, all right, in the, in the New Testament alone, over 24,000 manuscripts, but it's still being questioned as if it's a real book. And that's just in the New Testament alone. But, but Alexander, there's no doubt that he's a real person, but the Messiah, you know, there, there's still this, I don't know. The prophets, I, I don't know with all of these manuscripts and post manuscripts but there you there you go Alexander the son of Philip the Macedonian which that links back to Haman okay who was a Macedonian okay but as you continue reading we're, we're, we're at war with the Greeks okay in this chapter in this story now at the very end which is where you get Hanukkah who does the scripture say Okay. That we uh had a defense against. Okay, because we're warring with the, the Greeks, Seleucid, all right, and these various different armies and, 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 and men who were coming after us who were who were with the Greeks, right? And what does it say? What was the, the, the end end all be all, man? I start at sixty and at that time also, they build it up Mount Sion with high walls, okay, and strong towers round about it, lest the Gentiles, the natural Gentiles, should come and tread it down as they had done before. And now we're building up Mount Sion in a spiritual sense, okay, the brazen wall, okay, the holy city, New Jerusalem, the spiritual temple, and they set they're a garrison to keep it and fortified Bethsura to preserve it that the people might have a defense against Idumia. Idumia and a, a defense against who? Idumia. Who? Idumia. Who? Idumia. <laughs> Idumia. You can go to the Apocrypha only and type in Idumia and you'll see Idumia. In the Maccabees, a whole hell of a lot of times because the Greeks were the children of Idumia. But you had particular who still went after the name of Esau. But you had particular who put other names on themselves. Okay, but ultimately, there's no way around this truth, man. The Greeks were Edomites. Uh, uh, the Romans were Edomites. Okay, you hear about King Herod who, who tried to put all of the the male Hebrew children of death to cut off the, the, the Messiah from coming 
who was his father, Antipater the Idumean. Okay? So it's no way around it. Now also, before I end this video, you know, I pulled up, you know, all of the times, you know, that Haman, the son of Hamadathoth, you know, which was his father, you know, which this line, you know, is behind the scenes, even unto this day, working wickedness, you know, conquering lands. All right. Even back then, this is what they were doing. Why do you think Haman, you know, through his craft, you know, was able to wiggle his way up to second in command, doing what they always do so that he can eventually overthrow that kingdom and become first and set up their uh, shop, man. But he got caught. But here, if you notice, the scriptures made it a point to tell us that Haman was an Agagite because this all goes back to the story of Jacob and Esau, man. You see? But this is for those who have ears to hear and eyes to see. All right? It, it mentions Haman, the son of Amada, the, the, the Agagite, um, Esther 3 and 10 and the king took his ring from his hand and gave it to Haman the son of Amadathot the Agagite the Jews enemy the Jews enemy going all the way back to the womb we would be at war with these people man okay these people are at war with our power and us until this day okay the scriptures say that the Lord would have war with Amalek from generation to generation all the way up until this very day. When Yahweh Shah returns, he's, retor he's returning to an Edomite rule, rulership, okay? Amalek being the head of the rule, okay? <laughs> Esther 8 and 5, all right? Uh, uh, it talks about how Haman, the son of Hamadathot, the Agagite, all right? which he wrote to destroy the Jews. See, he wanted to destroy the Jews, man. It makes it a point to let you know that Haman, who was an Agagite, was the enemy of the Jews. Enemy of all the Jews. Esau is our enemy, man. See? <laughs> but, you know, for the average person reading this, they won't pick all of this up. All right, but we, all right, have that eye south to where we can see this, man. This has been a war since the womb. Okay, and Amalek is still here. All right, but what was the Lord's plan for all of them to be obliterated? And that's eventually going to happen under the house of David. All right, now David got rid of, you know, a lot of them that were in that region. You know, some fled. All right, but eventually they were, you know, because they were still in various other places. See, Alexander was an Amalekite, but you just have to put the pieces together. But anyway, Genesis 25, okay, and 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated all right, from thy bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the, long, the younger. All right, and then when they were born, they both received blessings. And what did Esau say after Jacob got his blessing? Genesis 27 and 41, and Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, the days of the morning of my father are at hand, and I will slay my brother Jacob so that's why Haman was pissed that's why uh, Herod was pissed that's why Esau is pissed until this very day okay and that all goes back to the garden as we showed you okay <laughs> so with that you know I just wanted to bring out a few little points this is all for those who have ears to hear man we put the pieces together via the spirit, all right, which is something no one, no one else on this earth except the men of the Lord are able to do, man. Hopefully, y'all were edified. Until the next one, Shalom.